Hello everyone and welcome to another Monster Hunter World video. Today I'm going to be sharing my tier list for the top 6 lances in Monster Hunter World. I'm making this tier list right after the release of Arch Tempered Call of Tarot, so it's probably going to be the most up to date lance tier list for Monster Hunter World so far until Iceborne comes out next year in August, at which point we can probably guess that all of the weapons in the game or in these tier lists are going to get shaken up pretty badly. Before we begin, I want to share some tips with players who have always been curious about using the lance and now they're watching this video as a way to get started. Each weapon class in Monster Hunter World tends to do a few things really well, and the sooner you have a feel for what that is, the sooner you can go on to master those weapons. The lance is surprisingly one of the best weapons in the game for chasing after a monster thanks to its dash attacks, and is also one of the few weapons in the game that can naturally mount using only your own moveset. Besides that, the lance is also known for having a lot of reach and being able to guard with a large shield. The moveset is designed around the idea that you're going to stab your target over and over again, and then when the target goes on to attack you, you can react with a counterattack. Properly counterattacking allows you to keep your damage output up, but it also uh, it's also a little riskier than simply guarding everything. Players who become very proficient with this weapon learn how to stay on the monster for the entire fight, and rather than guarding, they try to use as many counterattacks as possible. The lance is a blade weapon, which means for damage you're typically building affinity and critical boost, and this, uh, as well as dealing with sharpness, that's important too, because the lance has a medium attack speed that uses up sharpness pretty quickly. The only special skills you have to consider for the lance are guard and guard up. If you can afford three levels of guard, then your counter attacks are going to be better because you aren't going to be affected by high impact moves when you're guarding those moves with the with you know with the counter attack. Counter attacks technically guard the move, right? They, they actually feel the impact of the move. If you get knocked away because of the impact of that move, your counter attack's not going to go off or it's going to miss. And so having three levels of guard is going to kind of fix that. The best damage combo you can do with the lance is a triple high thrust followed by either a canceled counter attack or going directly into the dash attack. I'm showing that on screen right now. If you can't use one of those, then you should use a hop. The reason you would use a canceled counterattack rather than a hop is because hopping costs stamina. So when you go in to use your next triple thrust combo, you're going to be missing the maximum might uh, on your first strike. Does that make sense? So you kind of have to know how maximum might works. Maximum might, when you have full stamina, you get affinity. When you're missing stamina, you don't get any of the benefits of max might. So you do your triple thrust. If you do a hop, that costs stamina. If you do a counterattack, it doesn't. So you go into a canceled counterattack, and this means you get to keep maximum might the entire time. Okay. I don't want to turn this into a Lance Tips and Tricks video. I just told you the most important information. Let's move on to talking about the tier list. As an honorable mention, I'd like to point you guys toward the new Kajar Crest Paralysis as my choice for best ailment lance in the game. The trick to many of the Kajar weapons is that they've been balanced around the idea that you probably have a lot of super powerful armor loadouts at this point, and we do. The fact that it comes with default 10% affinity and that it can reach white sharpness as well as the built-in crit status skill means all you have to do is bring its sharpness up a little bit and then build the dragon set on top of it. It's going to have 100% affinity on all of its attacks, so it's always going to be benefiting from both crit status and master's touch attacks, and this is true for basically all of the Kajar weapons, right? Unfortunately, the Kajar Crest Paralysis is still going to be underperforming in terms of damage, right? So be sure you've got teammates who can take advantage of the Paralysis status. Also be sure to bring the Apothecary Mantle to help you trigger Paralysis twice or even three times in a single match. Uh, Lances do alright as ailment weapons. They don't have the fastest attack speed, but they don't have a slow attack speed either. If you were looking to simply optimize paralysis, you would let the bowguns be your crowd controllers, and that's pretty much true in 90% of all cases across all weapon classes. But if you were just trying to have fun, then I would use the Kajar Crest Paralysis with the Draken set. Now that we're done with that honorable mention, let's move on to 6th place, the lowest spot on our tier list. 6th place goes to the Kajar Crest Water for water elemental damage. Kajar Crest Water is basically an upgraded version of the Terrath Crest Water because the water damage comes unlocked. It also comes with an additional 10% affinity and of course, 
critical element, right? That comes on the weapon. It's secretly a good lance. 85, 85 on her horns. What do you think of that, guys? The, um, the water lance is actually stronger than the Tarith Crest Claw for fighting Kov Taroth. How about that? Just compare it to the Tarith Crest Claw. For a lot of fights, the claw is it is going to be better because it's going to access Elementless for a boost to raw damage. Uh, the claw also comes with 30% base affinity as well as uh, two augmentation slots. But Kishar Crest Water has a similar base attack value, white sharpness. It also has starting affinity of only 10%, but then it comes with built-in critical element and the water damage is unlocked. The reason this lance had to be added to the list is because after some testing, I discovered you actually do more damage with the Water Lance to Arch Tempered Kov Taroth in Stage 4 than you do with the Terrace Crest Claw. That's kind of a big deal. This isn't true for all of the new Kajar Lances, and I haven't tested the Kajar Ice Lance on Arch Tempered Kov Taroth in Stage 4 at this point, so keep your eyes on that weapon as well. It could be the case that the heavy amount of ice damage that that Lance is capable of doing also makes it a good option, maybe even a better option than the Water Lance, but then it would also be a better option than the Claw. Keep your eyes on that weapon. I haven't tested it, and it might belong on this list as well, and that's why we're talking about it here. We could basically give it an honorable mention. You could you could claim that maybe it should have been seven on the list, or uh, maybe it should have taken sixth place. But yeah, that, that is important, and it is relevant, because Arch-Tempered Cold Taroth has so many weapons, you're going to have to farm her a lot. Like all of the lances I'll be showing you today, here's a recommended build to go along with the Kashar Water Lance. Sixth place is the Kajar Crest Water for being a water lance that also does a fair bit of raw damage as well. Next up, I'm giving fifth place to the Kajar Crest Thunder. After various tests, it seems that the Kajar Crest Thunder is outperforming other lances for dealing damage to Kov Taroth in stages 1, 2, and 3 of the Kov Taroth Siege. I tested the Tarith Crest Claw for this, as well as the aforementioned Water Lance that we were just looking at. Since Kov Taroth is basically the most farmed monster in the game, with well over 300 weapons in her RNG pool, I figure ranking the best Thunder Lance or the best anti Kov Taroth weapon was important for this list. It is that relevant. For the build, you'll notice that we have to give up three medium decoration slots for Partbreaker, as well as a bunch of the small decoration slots for Thunder Attack. Because of this, we aren't able to build as much affinity as I would have liked, and so I've gone with a Razor Sharp build using the Zenajiva Gamma set. Razor Sharp reduces the loss of sharpness when you attack. Even with the blue sharpness bar that's already built into the weapon, sharpness is going to be an issue because you don't actually want to drop into green sharpness. The change from blue to green is a large drop in the sharpness damage modifier. I should also point out this weapon does not get white sharpness. For augmentations, I would probably go for affinity since a lot of Kov Tarot's moves are easy to detect and simple to guard against, which means you don't really need the health regen, but if you wanted the defense, you could go health regen. Moving on with the list, I'm giving 4th place to the Odo Garen Lance called Garandara 2. Garandara was the original strongest lance in the game before we got the Terith Crest Claw and maybe the Devil Joe uh, Lance as well, and this is pretty much a direct upgrade from the Garandara. The Terith Crest Claw is, is a direct upgrade. In fact, I almost only let Garandara be an honorable mention because now it's, it's fully redundant, right? Like we can say, yes, Garandara is better than these lances XYZ, but that doesn't matter because you would never use Garandara because you're always using uh, the Terith Crest Claw, a direct upgrade. However, I also feel like players should still know about this lance because it's technically still one of the most damaging lances that you can actually go and build. See what I'm saying? So accessibility is a big part of why Garandara is on the list. Accessibility is really useful for new players or players who have been unlucky with Kov Taroth RNG. So fourth place goes to the Garandara for being one of your strongest, easy to build options for lance mains. All right, and now we have my choice for third place, the Empress Lance Styx. The Lunastra Styx is also a lance that you can build. Although I understand it's harder to get all of the parts required to build it, you know, mainly you're going to need a Lunastra Gem, you're also going to need the Research Commission Ticket, and that can be really hard to access. And this is compared to the Garandara. We were just talking about Garandara and its accessibility. Well, Garandara is easier to put together. I've also been told that the Garandara 
should out damage the Lunastra sticks. I don't know if I'm convinced of that. However, regardless of this, you're typically not going to be using sticks to optimize damage output. You're really building it because it comes with razor sharp skill by default. And because you, you get so many types of builds on this kind of lance because it's just a very flexible weapon, right? Just based on its uh, attributes. So Lunastra sticks comes with white sharpness, positive affinity, razor sharp, and two medium decoration slots. Not only that, but it is one of the better damaging lances in the game. So whatever it is you're trying to build, maybe part breaker, maybe more defense, maybe you wanted earplugs and blast, you're going to be able to afford that on this lance. In other words, Lunastra is my pick for best utility lance, and that's why it's getting third place. For the recommended build, I've maxed the blast ailment given you earplugs and built for critical status the set bonus skill. You get that from the Zora Magdaros armor set. It's a fun build that you should definitely give a try against monsters who are weak to blast, and I think you'll be surprised at how well it damages the monster as well. You also notice for uh, for augmentations, I've gone with health regen. And that's mostly because this, once again, this is also pretty good as a defense lance. And now we have to talk about second place, which goes to the Fiendish Tower. Fiendish Tower had some competition coming from the Kajar Crest Decay Lance as a dragon damage lance. However, after running a few tests, I feel that the Fiendish Tower still has a solid advantage as both a dragon damage lance, but especially as a raw damage lance. There were a number of things that caught my attention. No matter how I optimized the build, Kajar Crest Decay just didn't seem to be putting out the same damage as Fiendish Tower. This is because even though high elemental damage looks nice, it isn't applied to the monster the same way that raw damage is applied, and all we really care about in the end is the aggregate damage that we're doing. Also versus monsters where you want to apply Elder Seal, but maybe that monster is kind of resistant to dragon damage, Fiendish Tower wins by a lot in that case. The double augmentations on the Finnish Tower are also important because you want to be able to use this lance against Arch-Tempered Valhazak to constantly heal against his DOT. This means you can either go all out like I did with double health regen, or you can go with one health regen augmentation and one affinity uh, augmentation. With Terrace Crest Decay, it's only got one augmentation slot and it should go toward affinity, but you're forced to take health regen versus Valhazak, especially if we're talking about Arch-Tempered Valhazak. Now, Decay isn't a terrible lance either. I don't want to just tell you to throw it away. The Decay lance is able to build Guard 3, whereas with the Phoenix Tower, you're really going to struggle to put Guard 3 into the build somewhere without losing a ton of something else important like Handicraft or Affinity. One thing you might think about doing with the Kajar Crest Decay Lance is that it might pair nicely with the Valhazak Gamma set. Kajar Decay doesn't need as many skills to boost its affinity into like the positive, you know, we're trying to get 100% affinity. Uh, so it doesn't need as many skills for that. And this is naturally a better fit for pairing it with a skill like Peak Performance. And Peak Performance is a skill that comes built into the Valhazak Gamma set. But personally, all of that is for people who are super concerned about defense, right? They want the super recovery skill. Monster Hunter World, in my opinion, leans toward high damage as a build meta, so I probably won't worry about, I mean, I suppose I can go build. Yeah, maybe I'll make a video on the Valhazak set in the near future. We should talk about it. People people seem to like it. So the, the, the Decay Lance, Kajar Decay, gets an honorable mention, and Fiendish Tower goes on to take second place in my tier list. And finally, we move on to the first place choice for lances. What do you think it could be? Who's that Pokemon? Did you guess the Terrot Crest Claw? That's right. Raw damage is still one of your most consistent options, thanks especially to how cheap it is to build the Elementless skill. Not all raw weapons are going to be having access to Elementless, but the ones you see that reach kind of like the end tier or top of their list for that weapon category, they tend to be weapons that already have high raw and you can build elementless. I have to say that I am glad that the Kajar weapons, the Kajar lances are challenging elementless with their unlocked elemental damage and default critical element skills. But needless to say, you can always reliably reach for the claw because raw damage applies to all of the monsters the same. There's a few things Terrot Crest Claw has going for it that helped it stand out really well over all of the other lances. It has a good starting attack value. You can bring the sharpness up to white. 
The starting affinity is a whopping 30% and you get two augmentation slots. And as I already mentioned, this is an elementless weapon. So you're additionally getting a big, well, I don't wanna say big, but you're getting a damage boost to your raw attack. So yes, the Tarot Crest Claw is going to be our best high damage lance option in a lot of fights. We're learning not all of them, but a lot of them, and it's very consistent. One of the things I like best about it is that if you get this lance, it's going to be good against pretty much everything. You can see on the build that we've once again gone with the Draken set. Maybe the Arch-Tempered Nergigante Gamma set will change this. We don't know yet. I have just enough sharpness to enter white sharpness. We have high static affinity. The total affinity is 105% versus weak spots. That's because we put two levels of weakness exploit on, and this means if you're landing your shots, you know, on a weak spot on the monster, you'll never have to resharpen your weapon, even though you have just a sliver of white sharpness. And I've also managed to fit Guard 3 onto the build. It's just the most solid all-around choice for your fights, it really is. So you should be farming Kul Tarot in order to unlock this lance, and if you already have it, don't be scared to go ahead and augment it. Alright, and that's the end of my tier list. I want to give a shout out to all of my Patreon supporters, and invite you all to join my Discord server. It's a very active Discord server. There's a link to the server in my description. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.